Allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. It is, it's me, it's TRG, the Ramblin' Gambler. Vest, check. Boots, check. Rings, check. Atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. Let's do this. This is episode 45 of our Casino Combat Podcast. Our podcast is about living a casino lifestyle and being good enough at gambling to make a profit living that lifestyle. Call it a lifestyle. Call it a side hustle. Just don't call it a comeback. I've been living this way for years and you can too. That's what this podcast is about. Me teaching how I do what I do so others can benefit from what I've learned. As a bonus, if you enjoy stories about the random stuff that happens in casinos, I've usually got a few of those to share as well. As I always say, welcome to the jungle. We've got fun and games. We actually do have games. Two of them have been built into the podcast from the very beginning. If you want to find out about those, check out episode 22, where they were discovered by a listener and revealed. They are explained in full. We have three winners so far, Golden Fan, Master of Details, and Keeper of Wisdom, all founding members of the Inner Circle, all part of the galaxy of Casino Combat characters. If you're new here, we spell a lot of things with a K. It was cheaper that way. I'll point those out as we go. Don't worry about that. Another thing that you need to know, the core concepts are the things every good gambler needs to know and use. Concepts is spelled with a K, of course. I talk about these ideas here all the time, but if you want to get up to speed on those or you want to review those, there is a playlist called Boot Camp, also spelled with a K, on our YouTube page that covers each of the core concepts in a short lesson. You can take the entire course in less than 90 minutes. One of the core concepts is to make wagers with the smallest possible house advantage, which is not wagering on slot machines. But I accidentally invented a slot machine strategy that uses most of the other core concepts and makes money for myself and my wife and some of our friends almost every month. We often spend entire days in casinos putting money in slot machines and then taking more money out a few minutes later. So in the interest of full transparency, I wrote the entire process down and turned it into a free ebook. If you would like a copy, send an email to me, trg at casinocombat.com, spell combat with a K, not a C, and in the subject line, put two words, slot tactics. Our email bot, Fred, will send you a link to download your copy of the ebook. We are also active on social media. The links to our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook are all on our website, casinocombat.com. All the important social media stuff, likes, shares, reviews, stars, follows, subscriptions, are always noticed and appreciated. If you have some extras of those to donate, we'd appreciate it. These days, you need a disclaimer, so let's do that and get started. Every single being who is listening, the mad scientist who may someday hang out with the ghost duck and haunt the queen of maples. Don't gamble with money you cannot afford to lose. Don't gamble with money you need to pay your bills. My past performances are not indicative of anyone's future results. If you have a gambling problem, get help. If you don't know how to get help, send an email to help at casinocombat.com. We will provide that information to you in a timely fashion. Names have been created at random to protect the guilty and the innocent. Events unrelated to outcomes may be omitted in the interest of brevity and clarity. Boom goes the dynamite, and we are off and running. This is episode 45. I know what I'm going to talk about. Let's check with the big book of numerology and see if it knows what I'm going to talk about, too. It usually does. The essence of 45 may be said to be a pragmatic and results-focused 9. Okay, no clue what that means. In addition to the number 9 essence, again, not a clue, 45 contains reliability, patience, Focus on building a foundation for the future and wit. 45 is worldly and sophisticated. Reliability, patience, building a foundation for the future. All things we are always about here on this podcast. But that next part, that next part, wit, worldly, sophisticated. I guess I changed the start of the show for a reason and I didn't even know it. Pleased to meet you. Won't you guess my name? Okay, okay, enough silliness. What are we going to talk about today? We talk a lot about blackjack which makes sense with the right rules. It offers the wager with the lowest house advantage, but you need a strategy chart to get that advantage and it can be an intimidating game to learn. So in a core concept segment today, I want to do an in-depth look at another game with a very small house advantage that is easier to play. In fact, we're going to simulate a few tables of that game during that segment as an illustration. I also have a casino wisdom segment for you and I'm going to give you another take on Uh, Let me check. Let me check. Where's Keeper of Wisdom's list? Number 60. That's it. We're going to do number 60. Have a win stack. A different look at that. 
As always, I traveled, I gambled, and you need to hear the results to know if any of this works in the real world. So we will do a travel segment. Finally, last week, I shared a story about how I acquired a ring several of you commented on from our social media posts. That story has a part two unrelated to the ring. I promised last week that we would do part two of that story today, and we will in the VIP lounge. Before we get to all that, I want to once again thank Keeper of Wisdom for taking his call sign very seriously. He's worked with me over the past two weeks to create an official and accurate list of our Casino Wisdom numbers and the episodes they first appeared in. T-Rex and I have reprogrammed Fred the email bot, and she can now email you a copy of the official Casino Combat book of Casino Wisdoms. If you would like a copy, send an email to me, trg at casinocombat.com, and in the subject line... As always, two words. In this case, get wisdom. G-E-T space W-I-S-D-O-M. Send that email. She will send you a link and you can download the official list as authorized and reviewed by Keeper of Wisdom. Okay, next. Let's do core concepts. Actually, wait, no. For whatever reason, the podcast blew up in Australia this past week. From nothing, no listens at all, to become about 1% of the total audience with listeners in four different cities. I'm not sure why that happened. But if you're in the land of Oz and you are listening to this, drop me an email. I'd love to hear about gambling in the land down under. (laughs) Okay, now we'll do the core concepts. Let's get it. One of our core concepts is to make wagers with the smallest possible house advantage. And in almost every casino, that wager is blackjack. But blackjack requires a strategy chart. And because the rules of the game allow cards to be split to create multiple hands and the doubling of a wager after additional hands are created, what started as one wager can become as many as eight wagers, which means you need to have a proper bankroll and be prepared to have a lot of money on the table in some situations. Bakara, on the other hand, offers wagers with a very small house advantage without the need for a strategy chart or a bankroll that can deal with wagers that grow due to splits and doubles. Bakara in North America is most commonly played with six or eight decks of cards, and that's what I'm going to assume for today's discussion. Three bets are always offered. Tie, which has a house advantage of 14.36%, that's way too high. Banker, which has a house advantage of 1.06%, and player, which has a house advantage of 1.24%. Some games offer a pairs bet and or side bets like Dragon and Panda. The pairs bet and the various side bets should all be avoided. In fact, since we are looking for wagers with the smallest possible house advantage, the banker bet is the only one we need to concern ourselves with. A house advantage of 1.06% means that casino management expects to keep $1.06 of every $100 wagered on banker on the Baccarat table. Basically, a bet on banker is almost a 50-50 bet. It's betting on heads if we are flipping a coin repeatedly. Sort of. Pretty close. There are rules to Baccarat. The dealer pushes a lot of cards around to determine the outcome. I could explain all that. I think you'd be bored. I know I'd be bored. Honestly, I long ago stopped bothering to remember what all the card pushing means. It really just doesn't matter. The dealer does all the work, and as a player, I don't need to worry about any of it. I just need to make my wagers, manage my money, and use my exit strategies correctly. It's very easy. But if you're interested in all the rules and what the card pushing means, I encourage you to consult wizardofodds.com. They do an excellent job of explaining everything. Look, Baccarat played this way is one of the easiest games the casino offers. You don't really need to know anything other than bet on banker, and you need to know TRG Wagering System 1, and you need to know your exit points. It's that simple. Since this is basically a coin toss, today I'm going to do an experiment using a coin and an experimental bankroll, or EBR. Obviously, this EBR is virtual, just existing for this episode of the podcast. No real dollars will be harmed during this presentation. Since we don't have to be concerned with splits or doubles in Baccarat, our bankroll can be a little more precise than my normal formula, which is unit size for the wager times 10 wagers times 3 tables. TRG Wagering System 1 calls for regressive wagers of 1 unit, 2 units, 4.5 units, and then an exit if none of those wagers are 1. So if our unit size is $10, we need 10 plus 20 plus $45, a total of $75 per table, times 3 tables as our virtual EBR. 
You're going to need to stick with me on this, I suspect. I often say this is reality podcasting. Obviously, this is recorded, but for me right now, this is live. Um, I'm going to attempt to do the coin flips, record the results, and discuss things as this all goes along and not leave a whole bunch of dead air here for you. If it gets a little rough around the edges, I apologize in advance. That I'm going to try to make this all work, and I could actually use another whole set of hands probably for this, but uh, T-Rex does his help virtually, uh, and uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to make this all work. I'm going to bet on banker for each flip. Always banker. Heads is banker. Tails is player. For the sake of this experiment, tie is not an option. So this is an illustration, not a simulation, okay? I'm admitting right up front that this is a less than perfect model of Baccarat, but I'm trying to illustrate a whole bunch of these concepts and how they can be brought together to play this very, very simple game. Here we go. Let's see how this goes. So this is table one, and I'm starting with a wager of $10. Tails. So I lost $10, and I'm going to make my next wager using TRG Wagering System 1, which is $20. Tails, which is also a loss. This could end really quickly. So a third bet of $45. Okay, that's heads. A winner on the banker bet. So I have a profit of $15 for the three-bet sequence. Bet and lost 10 Bet and lost 20, that's a loss of 30. Bet 45, won that, that's a, a win of all my money back, plus $15. That's what's supposed to happen, or I'm going to leave the table. Okay, hold on while I make some notes. Uh, our wager is going to return to a single unit, single $10. It's a losing wager with a result of tails, or player, in our simulation. So $20, here we go. Tails, a loser again. Well, back to 45 Okay, and heads a winner and a profit for that sequence of $15. Back to 10. Kind of missed the mark there, but that's a tails. Uh, so now $20. Tails a loser. $45. Heads again, another $15 profit. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've had nine bets so far, nine hands so far. It would not go this quickly at a Baccarat table. That's the benefits of this simulation. On the table, I would now have two stacks of chips. I would have a stack of $75 and a stack of $45. We're going to talk about that more in the Casino Wisdom segment next. But I'm not at an exit point. $45 is not enough to start talking about an exit yet. So $10 on Banker. And that's tails a loser, and per the wagering system, $20 bet, and that's a loser. And I'm going to bet $40, $45, sorry, $45, and that's also tails. That's also a loser. And so now I'm leaving the table, right? If I was in a casino, I'm walking away. I've, I've had my three losses in a row. Let's look at the numbers. I'm going to walk away with 65 virtual dollars instead of the 75 I started with. So that's what the system is supposed to do, right? system is supposed to, if you don't win, keep your losses small enough that you can recover for them. We're not going to just keep digging in and piling money on money on money. In a real casino, I'd have earned some points and my bankroll would still be intact to try this all again. And this is the time where I take a walk for a bit, you know, if it's, even if it's just around the casino floor. I record the results and any observations or notes from the table. I get something to eat or I have a drink or I look at the fountain or whatever. Step away from gambling, then make decisions about more gambling or about doing something else instead. Okay, that went pretty well. Not too tough. Uh, let's play at least one more imaginary table, starting again with $75 and a $10 bet. Oh, we start with heads. A winner, so $10 is the bet again. And that's uh, that's tails, that's a loser. So winner, lose. So the next bet's $20. And that's heads a winner. So that's a $10 profit for the two hands, and we are back to $10 again. That's tails, a loser. $20 next. Heads a winner, a profit of $10 again. That's heads, $10 profit, and another $10 wager. 
heads, another $10 profit. So now I'm going to use the progressive part. We were on the regressive side of things a lot on the first table. Now we're going to go on the progressive side of TRG Wagering System 1. We're going to increase our wager to $15 since I won two hands in a row. So here we go, $15. And that's tails, that's a loser. Okay, so I still have a profit. I need to make a regressive wager of 10 units since I lost, but I still have a profit. I still have $5 from those three hands, right? I still have a profit. I won 10, then I won 10, and then I lost 15. So I still have $5 out of the, that sequence of three hands on pushing up on the prog progressive side. So here we go with that bet of $20. And that's heads. That's a winner. So, okay, so $10 again. Heads again, another winner. So now I have a stack of the $75 that I started with. I call that a play stack and a stack of $75, which is my win stack. And imagine trying to keep track of all of this and, uh, and a stack of chips to make all this work. Now, so at this point, $75 in my play stack, $75 in my win stack. I need to start thinking about leaving with a win. At the point where I've doubled up what I started with, I don't want to leave if I keep winning, but I want to leave with some profit. It's very important to me when I get to this point that I leave this table with more money than I started with. So my next bet's going to be $15 since I won two, two in a row. Yep, check notes, one, two in a row. And I want to make a progressive wager again. And that's, that's tails, that's a losing hand. So again, now I'm going to go from the progressive side to the regressive side, and I'm going to go with two units. Not double what I just bet, but two units, right? A $20 bet. Heads. Okay, so we're still on track. Still have a win going. Got a $5 increase for that sequence. A little bit added to the win stack. Okay. $10. Maybe we can keep it going. Nope. Tails. That's a loser. So now we're back to $20 again. And that's heads. This is a nice streak, actually. We've won 100 virtual dollars so far. We have to leave this table with a win. We have to leave this table with a win. It's essential. That's the only way we can beat their small advantage over time. So back to $10 is our wager. Heads again. No change to our bet since we've not won two one-unit bets in a row. That's tails. So $20 is our next bet. And that's heads again. Okay, nice. So back to 10 again. Heads again. Another 10. Heads. Another heads. So now we can be progressive again and go to 15. Just a second. Math, math and notes. Math and notes. Okay. Uh, so we're at 15. And that's tails. That's a loser. So we're back to the $20 wager. Heads. <laughs> Boy, I kind of wish this was real money now. Uh, so back to $10. Heads again. 10 again. Another heads, up to 15 again. Tails. Okay, so now that was a loss. So now $20. And that's tails. So, okay, now, now we've kind of got a, a decision to make. Um, our win stack is... Our win stack is 155 and our play stack is at 45. We've won $125 at this point. TRG Wagering System 1 would tell us our next bet should be $45. We can make that bet or we can walk away with a profit of $125 minus a tip for the dealer. If we make that bet and lose, our profit is $80 minus a tip for the dealer. I'd make the bet and accept the fact that if I lost, I, I still have double, doubled my money for the table. So I'm going to make that bet. Here goes a banker bet at $45. Tails, that's a loser and time to walk away from the table. Let's assume a $5 tip for the dealer, a profit of $75 for that table. We had a $10 loss for the first table, a profit of $65 for the two tables. If I was gambling locally, if I had not made a drive somewhere, if I didn't have a hotel room, 
I'd be looking to hang out with friends or head out the door with my profits and my points and call it a day. I'd call that a good session, did what I needed to do, presumably got some free stuff when I walked in the door. Uh, admittedly, maybe I'd stop and play a slot machine a little bit, maybe something like that. But I'd probably be done with tables if I was gambling locally and, and I'd just move on to other parts of my life. Not a perfect simulation of Baccarat, certainly, but an illustration of a variety of core concepts, wagering systems, casino wisdoms, all kind of in action. Simulated action, but an illustration, as I said. I've said it before, I don't find Baccarat particularly interesting. It's a slow-paced game. I don't actually do anything other than make bets. But if you are new to table gaming or new to gambling in general, Baccarat is an easy game to play with a very small house advantage. You can use just the information presented in this segment and have a good chance of leaving the casino with a profit, or at worst, with a small loss that the comps and gifts should make up in the long run. Next, we have a moment of casino wisdom. Casino wisdom number 60 is simple. Have a win stack. The concept, as I illustrated in our virtual Baccarat session, is a simple one. When I gamble, I organize my chips so that I have the chips I started with as a play stack. And if I start winning, I start a second stack of chips that I call my win stack. This is also casino wisdom number 99. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your gambling, but on a micro scale, on the scale of just the table. It's using the way my chips are arranged to tell me at a glance exactly where I'm at financially for that table. This is a very useful and powerful technique, but I wanted to discuss it today in a broader sense. When I was very young, machines to do calculations were rare and expensive. They were called adding machines, and outside of some accountant's offices, you didn't see them very often. So in elementary school, we were taught to use something called an abacus. An abacus is a set of colored beads on strings or rods in a frame. You move the beads up and down to do the math, and you look at where the beads end up to tell you the results of the calculation. Chips can be your abacus in the casino. They can be a physical tool for keeping track of things, a variety of things. You may not be aware of this, but casinos generally don't allow players to put anything on the table other than chips, money, players' cards, or strategy cards. Everything else you have to keep off the table. But they don't care what players do with the chips. I mean, you can't throw them at other people and et cetera, et cetera, but they really don't pay attention to what you do with your chips in front of your seat. At times, I use a pair of chips to keep track of of the running count and the true count when counting cards in blackjack, so I don't have to remember the results of past hands. I just fix the chips after each hand is finished, and I know the count. I still do that if I'm counting cards. Currently, I use chips as an abacus to tell me if I'm winning or losing by having a win stack and a play stack. In fact, one of the things I've started doing is having a play stack and a win stack, and when the win stack gets larger than my original buy-in, I'll split it into a buy-in stack, a win stack, and a play stack. If I'm doing well enough to expand out to three stacks, then I know if I lose the play stack, I'm still leaving the table with my original buy-in and the amount in the win stack. And with the chips acting as my abacus, I can really start to let things loose at that point and start going for a home run win. I can divide larger winning hands between the win stack and the play stack, increasing the amount of chips in the win stack, increasing the value of the win stack. I'm never going to touch the buy-in stack. And so when I increase the play stack, I can start increasing my unit size in proportion to the amount of money in the play stack. And I can play from that position of strength, that position of being sure that I'm going to leave with all my money and a win and as my unit sizes increase, as long as I keep winning, my wins increase. That's perfect. So, Casino Wisdom number 60 isn't just about having a win stack. That is important. But it's also about realizing that chips can be a tool for tracking almost anything if you see them as an abacus, not just as money to be won or lost. As always, I rambled for the purpose of gambling this week, so let's talk about that in the travel segment.
After being in Las Vegas for five days, I needed to slow down and exist in my normal life a little bit last week. But, yeah, let's be honest, my normal life is somewhat a constant application of Casino Wisdom number 81, ABC, always be casinoing. So I started the week with a visit to my local casino for some free slot play and a purse as a gift. Full disclosure, my play here has not been good enough to justify or qualify for the gift. I had to earn it with points, which means normally I wouldn't get the gift. The blackjack tables were full, but even playing blackjack, I'm not going to get the huge, ridiculous amount of points they want you to get playing blackjack. But I ended up at a craps table, and by the time I reached an exit point at the craps table, I had enough points for the purse, so I got the purse while I was there. I'm still figuring craps out, but the points are really nice compared to the points I get from playing blackjack, at least locally. So, some benefit there, I guess. At the end of the week, I made a solo trip west to my home casino, Casino 2, where I had a room comp and a free bed available. My home casino is just getting better and better. You can have a drink without ordering food now, which means no more free hot dogs everywhere. And the waitress can bring you drinks at the table while you're gambling, which is a big change. And that turned up another surprise from my home casino. Keep in mind that I've never been to this casino when there isn't a pandemic going on. The first time I ever set foot in the place was during the third episode of this podcast. I was pleasantly surprised when the waitress told me that if I changed my order from a brand named bourbon and diet to just well bourbon and diet, my drink would be comped. So bonus. I didn't know my home casino could comp drinks. That's big upside. My, my first blackjack table was a lengthy slog to a losing exit point. After dinner, I finished the second blackjack table with a small win and then had a nice long win at my third table. This is a table where I reached the point I mentioned earlier in the Casino Wisdom segment. My play stack and my win stack grew to include a third buy-in stack and I continued to win money and add to my win stack for more than an hour before finally losing my play stack and wrapping up the evening with a nice win at a favorite slot machine. As I often do when I visit my home casino. I was on the road the next day with plenty of time to stop by Casino One on my way home. That's the value of that casino cluster. That's the value of having them close together so you can get free stuff multiple places with one trip. They gave me some match play and a drink comp. I enjoyed my drink while losing money at a slot machine and then had a nice winning session at the blackjack table and finished up with a win on another slot machine that offset the loss on the first slot machine. A slow week, only three casinos visited. The end result was I finished the week with a cash profit after expenses, just short of two days pay. And that's excluding craps results, which are still on an EBR of their own and not officially part of casino combat. I like weeks like this. I took less than one day off from my, quote, regular job, which honestly, I made up that time on the weekend. That's the benefit of being self-employed. And I won two days pay. So I got financial benefit out of that little bit of time off and I got to hang out in a couple of my favorite casinos not Las Vegas but I'll take it plenty of people don't get to do that as promised part two of the story from last week's episode up next in the VIP lounge oh a little bit of the bubbly Our VIP lounge is open when we say it's open. Come on in. You know how this goes. All the best virtual beer, wine, and spirits, sparkling water, handcrafted artisanal pop, locally bottled sodas, and still water. It's 5 o'clock somewhere, but it's early here, so just a little red wine for me today. Feel free to pour yourself something and join me. The date is 420 as I'm recording this, so if that's legal where you are, help yourself that way as well. (laughs) Last week, I told you that several years ago, my local casino gave me good seats to an NBA game and a hotel room near the casino in the arena to spend the night in. Early in the day, I won 33 days pay in the high limit room, paid all my bills for the month, plus some extra payments on things. I put my original bankroll for the day back in the safe along with some of the winnings. I got a haircut and bought a ring. I held on to enough of the win so that a friend and I could enjoy the game and I could finish the evening gambling in the high limit room with a portion of my winnings. Basically, after the game, I had 12 bets available to me in the high limit room. Four days pay out of the 33. The the 33 that I had won earlier in the day, basically. Uh, My friend, 
who went to the game with me was a slot player. So we kind of parted ways when we entered the casino. He went to his part of the casino and I headed to the bar and then to the high limit room to play some more blackjack. But this was mostly just gambling for entertainment. It was mostly just gambling to, to hang out. I mean, I still made all the correct blackjack plays in terms of blackjack strategy. And I still made my bets using TRG Wagering System 1. But I was going to play till I lost the 12 units or won a decent amount or got bored and tired. And at about 1.30 a.m., the waitress bought, brought me my drink for last call. I'd been gambling for about three hours and I was down to my last $100 black chip. I figured this was a pretty perfect way to end to, to the end of the evening, to end of the day, to wrap everything up. I, I put the chip in the circle and said, here we go, all in, all done, and took a sip of my drink. And I won. So I just let it ride. I just let the $200 ride, ready for the evening to be over, and I got a blackjack. So now I have $500 to play with. Now things are going to get interesting again, instead of just being over. I ended up gambling from that one chip for a couple more hours, which is easy to do if you have a hotel room nearby and it's the middle of the night. No one's calling you on the phone or texting you. When I finally finished up, I'd gone from one little black chip, all in, all done, to a win of over 300 days pay in addition to what I started with, making my total win over 18 hours before and after the basketball game more than 36 days pay. I also got great seats to an NBA game and a very nice hotel room. When I finished playing, I texted my host and had her arrange for a late checkout. I slept for 10 hours and was home in time for dinner with the fam. A great day all the way around. In poker, the expression is, all you need is a chip and a chair. And in this case, it was true in blackjack as well. All I needed was a chip and a chair and plenty of time to make some money. If you're playing the casino chip game, there are 10 in this episode. Please, tip your waitresses, tip your bartenders, tip your dealers. Remember your casino wisdoms. Don't tip away your wins. I have spoken. Everything you heard here is true from a certain point of view. It's time for leaving, and I hope you understand I was born a rambling man. Love it. Hate it. It don't matter. Please share with your family and friends. Goodbye, everyone.